One World Birth Studio. In fact, I'm not going to say any more than that, Tony. I'm going to hand over to you and um, ask you to introduce yourself. And um, take it from there. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Sarah, and uh, hello, everyone. And uh, this is brilliant. This is the idea of kind of communicating around the world simultaneously. It's fantastic. Uh, if, is everybody okay? Can everybody hear me okay? Can everybody see me? Is it is it all good with everybody? Uh, uh, I'm going to sort of, I'm going to keep an eye on the comments, but otherwise, uh, so I'm hoping that everything is okay and everyone can see. Okay, so I'm Tony Harmon. I'm in the UK, and I'm the co-founder of uh, One World Birth with my uh, partner, who's actually here next to me. So say hello. Uh, <laughs> this is my part partner, Alex. Uh, Alex Wakeford. So he's the other other kind of co-founder of One World Birth. And uh, so I don't know if you know anything about me, or you know anything about our Facebook group, or anything about our website. But I'm going to sort of go through the basics of, of who we are, what we're doing, and the the point, the kind of purpose of this session is we want to talk about uh, having a revolution in birth and making a kind of a global revolution um, uh, in birth, and um, and that means everybody, so from doulas, uh, midwives, uh, birth educators. Um, authors, campaigners, everybody's getting together and, and, and kind of coming together and saying, okay, we, we, that could be better around the world and we can do this. We can join together and make a difference. So um, I'll go back to the beginning. So my name is Tony Harmon. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I'm not a midwife. Uh, or I think most of, the other, or most of the other speakers, most of the other sessions are uh, midwives and I think I'm, I'm the kind of exception because I'm a filmmaker. Um, so my story is that uh, I I went to the London Film School. I trained making uh, making films, and uh, I worked as a producer, director, and making TV programs. And then I had a baby. And uh, when I had my baby, it was quite a difficult birth experience. Basically, I had a, a cascade of interventions that led to an emergency C-section. And um, I thought this uh, birth can be better than this. Uh, and I can use my skills as a filmmaker to try to help other people um, have, have a better birth experience for them. So uh, we started off and made a, a film called Real Birth Stories, which is a three DVD box set um, about uh, people with birth stories. So it's got five couples, warts and all's birth stories. Then I made a documentary called uh, Doula, which is a documentary film following um, or showing three birth in intimate close-up detail just uh, just show, and showing the what a doula does effectively and showing doulas in action okay so now I am making one world birth away so um, it's what it what it is is uh, over the last 18 months since, since we began this project we've been filming the world's uh, leading birth experts so far we have filmed over a hundred of the of these experts so we filmed Ina Mae Gaskin, twice, uh, Sheila Kitzinger, Michelle O'Donnell, Dr. Sarah Buckley, uh, Professor Sue Dowd, we filmed uh, Sheena Byron the other day, uh, we filmed um, Leslie Page, who I know just spoke and she was wonderful, we filmed um, Professor Sally Tracy, Dennis Walsh, um, uh, Kirsten of Nuss Moberg, who else have we filmed? Uh, we filmed um, people in America, we filmed midwives in America, in uh, Canada, in France, um, and uh, most especially I've just got off the plane this evening because I've been in Hungary and um, I went to film um, Agnes Gerab in Hungary. So, um, but I'm going to come back to that in a little while. So, okay, so what One More Birth is, is um, our idea is to film interviews with these world leading birth experts. So over a hundred midwives, obstetricians, doulas, birth activists, campaigners, authors. And so to get their knowledge on film and to share that knowledge with um, expectant parents and with other birth professionals. Because uh, I know that you probably know this, but just 
at the moment, all this knowledge is in books. And uh, I know lots of people do read books, but actually right now, where most information is shared is by social media, by the internet, by YouTube, by Facebook. Um, so we wanted to create content, so usable content, these, these experts, these, this evidence-based information that is easily, easily shareable um, across the internet. Um, and, and it's free, that, that's the idea, that, that just this, this kind of massive global project. So we started releasing clips, but, but we're building this project so it becomes this um, it's like a conversation. We want, want these experts to, to talk to you guys through video, to, to communicate with you, um, so that the, all this evidence-based information gets shared so that um, expecting parents are, are fully informed of all their birth, birth choices. So that's the vision. So we want to use that knowledge, that information, that education um, to inspire change around the world. So if expectant parents, um, there's a buzz on the line, I don't know if someone's turning the mic on, okay. So if expectant parents had this information, then they might make different birth choices or better birth choices. So that's the kind of vision, is to make birth better by informing everybody. So um, uh, so that's the idea. Okay, I'm going to change the slide. Hold on a sec. Okay, so our mission statement. Uh, we want to use the power of video and social media to get people talking positively about birth. Yeah, that's, what, that's the key word. It's all about positive. It's positive information for positive action, for positive change. And we want everybody to be, I mean, it would be my dream if everyone right around the world was talking about birth, that it wasn't a taboo subject, that it wasn't just about um, horror stories that people share of their birth. We want people to say, wow, I had a fantastic birth, um, and this is, this is how I had that birth. And whether that's a C-section or um, by natu a natural delivery, a natural birth, it's kind of all those births should be positive, should be inspiring, um, and for people to talk about birth, because if people talk about birth, then um, it kind of it becomes out of the sort of a, a, a kind of a, a subject that that inspires people, and and you can talk about how, how you had a, a good birth and and the physiological things that were done, and it kind of takes away from an obstetric model of care, more towards a midwifery model of care, which I think is the, the key. I mean, midwives, you guys, or most of you guys, are the guardians of normal birth. You guys are the, the ones that, that can enable women and support women to have a fantastic birth. And at the moment, uh, there's, and you guys know this, that there's kind of systems in place and obstetric systems which making physiological birth not well it's possible obviously but it's just it's difficult um i mean i've mean, come to filming and this girl i mean this yeah, well i'll come to that in a bit so okay so yeah okay women i say so lisa's written women are the guardians of birth yes women are the guardians of birth but it's midwives are the, the guardians of normal birth you're the kind of supporters you're the the the, the ones that can guide women to have a normal, fantastic, wonderful birth. Okay, so that's my mission statement. So, um, so part of this is to take away the fear, the fear of birth. Um, when you, when you and, and part of this fear comes from the internet. Um, when you, as soon as you find out you're pregnant, the first thing you do is you go into Google and you type out, um, I am pregnant. And aside from the whole load of um, ads for formula milk, um, then you're just bombarded with information and you don't know what information is right, you, you kind of get, you get shared horror stories, you get shared um, advertising, you get, get shared promotional stuff and we want to cut through that and just provide, be a, be a kind of home of evidence-based information from the world's leading birth experts. That's what we are about, we're about. so it's kind of cutting through the the mass of information to provide good evidence-based information. So yes, that, that's us. I'm going to turn the slide. Okay. Oh, oh, that's a photo of me, by the way, on the slide. That's us in the, 
uh, at the end of our difficult birth experience, our emergency C-section. That's the first time I held my daughter. So yeah. Okay. So, so who is in one world birth? Okay. So um, these are pictures I just had on my uh, my desktop actually. So it's not representative, but uh, on the left you've got Kathy Warwick, who is the general secretary of the Royal College of Midwives. You've got Sheila Kitzinger, who is um, author um, and amazing social uh, anthropologist. Anthropologist Ina Mae Gaskin, amazing, fantastic midwife. Uh, Dr. Sarah Buckley down here on the left, um, fantastic uh, doctor and just a real inspiration who talks about um, how birth is an endangered species, natural birth is an endangered species. Uh, Professor Fen, uh, I, I can't say her name, it's, um, Fen Chung, I probably said it pronounced it really bad, but she's a professor in, um, in China of midwifery. Uh, Michelle Adant, and I'm going to turn the page again. Can anyone see Tony? Oh, hopefully you guys can see me. Or oh, am I not? Oh, is that... Uh, so I can't see myself. I don't know if, if, if everything's been moved up a little bit. Okay, so Sarah, is there a way that you can move myself Hi, down? Hi, down? Sarah? Tony, you haven't got your webcam on, have you? Yay! There I am. Yes? Oh no. What you need to do is click on uh, start my it's webcam. Covering it. Yeah, I got it. No, okay. it wasn't covering so, it. You didn't have it on. Can you see me now? Oh, okay. Can you see me now? So just yeah, see, I got you. Hello. just have to see how it goes. Um, so, Tony, can I just, can I interrupt, hold on Tony, before you launch in further, if, can we just see how this goes, because we've got a full room and I'm not sure if the room is going to be able to support you using webcam as well, so if we're finding that people are um, it's interfering with their connection, we'll have to turn you off. Okay, so I'm going so I'll, I'll keep going unless I hear from you, Sarah, that uh, I, I need to turn myself off. Okay? All right, so who else is in it? So, again, these are just ones grabbed from my desktop. Oh, no, these are photos. So we've got all of these, all of these people you can read for yourself, um, plus loads of others. And uh, that's the thing. We've been to um, various conferences around the world, and we've filmed outside of those conferences. And the whole idea is to... Sort of gather this information to inspire the world, to inspire change. Okay, so, um, there's, so how do you use, as a midwife or as a, as a, um, a doula or as a birth educator, how do you use our stuff? Okay, well, you can go to our website, which is oneworldbirth.net. Uh, it's a just one, one, it's a website, onewordbirth.net. Uh, and so we've released, I don't know, probably about 50 different clips. Uh, we released them in September, we launched in September last year, and we, we kind of did a test. We thought, okay, how is this going to work? What do people actually want? So we released all these clips. Um, and the feedback we had was really good, that this is really good evidence and information. But what people, the biggest feedback we had is, is the most useful thing we could do is to, is to create um, two things. One, which is an archive, an archive of all these people, so they're easily searchable on different subjects and by people. So that's what we're building at the moment. That's what's taken quite a long time to build this. So we've done all, pretty much all the filming of, of 100 different people all around the world, um, although we still want to come to Australia and New Zealand. So we're, we're coming there, and we want to go to Japan, and we want to go to, to Brazil too. Um, so it's an archive, so I want to create a video archive where people can search this, this mass of information, these amazing evidence based like heroes really. Um, and from all different um, from you know, all different uh, areas of birth. Um, sorry, that's my, my email going off. Um, so your obstetricians and your midwives and your dealers and your heads of organisations and your professors and your um, Whatever. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, so we want to create an archive. We're going to release short clips, and that's what we've been doing. We're going to release a whole load more. But also, um, we want to. The biggest feedback we have is that people want to see long-form documentaries. 
they wanted to see longer films on certain topics. Um, so, and I'm going to come back to this in a minute. So the first film we're making, which is why we're in Hungary, which is why what this kind of big thing we're doing at the moment. Sorry, it's not the mic. Okay, and doctors, yes. We, we film lots of doctors, obstetricians, um, family practice doctors, GPs. We film lots, so it's great. Okay, so apart from doing um, an archive and uh, long-form documentaries and releasing short-form shareable clips on Facebook and everything else, um, we're also organising a series of real-life events and campaigns to get people talking about birth. Um, oh, I'm going to come to that one. I realise that one's the next one. So, um, uh, and I think I've got a slide about what we're actually doing, the live-action event. So, so I'm going to come back to it. Okay, so... Uh, what have we been doing? So the first film we're making right now is a film about human rights and about um, what's happening. Um, there's a conference, I don't know if you guys know, but there's a conference. Um, I love that comment, Sharon Robinson, probably needs an advice filter. Yeah, too right. Um, there's a conference at the end of May, on May 31st, in, Hague, in The Hague in the Netherlands, which is um, all about the the Human Rights in Childbirth Conference. And uh, we're going there, and it's all about, um, I don't know how much you know about this, but Article 8 of the European Convention of Human Rights um, is all about the right to respect privacy and family life. And within that, um, in 2010, there was a ruling by the European Court uh, about uh, uh, the case about, called uh, the case called Chernovsky. Oh, oh, oh! I can hear myself like that. I can hear myself like that. Okay. Echo, echo, echo. Eek. Why can I hear myself? Has someone turned on a microphone? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm back on. Okay, so um, so there's a case called Ternovsky versus Hungary. Um, and what it meant was that, uh, and it went to the European Court of Human Rights um, in Strasbourg in 2010, and the ruling was that um, women have the right to choose where they give birth, um, which is great, um, except it's got massive ramifications. It means that the, within Europe, now that we uh, women can invoke the Article 8 of the Human Rights Act and quote um, this Ternovsky versus Hungary case. I'm not a lawyer, this is what a lawyer, a human rights lawyer told me. So we're, um, we're interviewing her at The Hague. He's going to kind of explain all this and what we have to do. But this massively changed the ballpark, massively, so that everyone within Europe has the right to decide where they give birth and invoke that right. Um, whether the, and the hospital or their care provider has to take positive action when that invoke when uh, when you invoke the human rights convention, this Article Eight. But it, was in, it has ramifications for America because America's America's constitution is taking lead from the European Convention for Human Rights, and also in Australia, Australia is has a new, but also could could hopefully take its lead from the European Convention of Human Rights. Um, okay, I'm going to come back to that comment. Anyway, so we are filming um, at The Hague at the end of May to provide, so we've got, uh, if, to speak to well, the people we're interviewing at The Hague, are all your human rights lawyers are all the, the kind of the, the, ac uh, the academics on this really, it's a technical thing. But basically, it's going to change the world. It's going to change the world in terms of uh, our rights, every woman's right to give birth. Um, is that right about the US? Yes, this is me paraphrasing my discussion with a human rights lawyer um, about the situation in the US. So I'll be able to give you the interview with a human rights lawyer from The Hague uh, at the end of this, well, after we filmed her at the end of this month. So she can clarify exactly what it means for the US. But as far as what she's explained to me is that the, the US Constitution is, is separate, obviously, from Europe, but it is taking its lead for in some but instances. But it is taking its lead for some instances from the European Convention of Human Rights, which was written in 1948 or whatever. Oh, echo, echo. echo.
Okay. So, uh, where was it? Okay, so why were we in Hungary? Okay, so it's a Ternovsky case, Ternovsky versus Hungary. And uh, we filmed um, Anna Ternovsky this afternoon. We filmed the woman who has changed history for, for womankind, or changed the law to enable women to... If this works, if this kind of legal act, which is what they should do, and, and um, hospitals and care providers have to act on this act, on the Article, 4, Article 8 of the Human... Um, uh, Article 8 of the Human Convention of the yeah, European Convention for Human Rights, uh, as invoked within the Ternovsky versus Hungary case. Anyway, we interviewed her this afternoon. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, and yesterday... Uh, do you guys recognise this lady? So uh, we interviewed her yesterday. It's uh, the obstetrician midwife, Dr Agnes Gerob. Uh, okay, so yes, so you're from Cumbria. Yes, uh, on this human rights thing, again, I'm going to have to... We're going to film the, the human rights lawyer talking about the US situation. So I can only paraphrase. That's, what, that's my understanding, but we're just going to have to kind of film her and then we'll give you that information. Okay, so um, Agnes Gerab, um, who is an amazing home birth um, obstetrician and midwife who's done, I think she's done 3,500 um, home births in Hungary. However, she's been um, criminalised for practising home birth and um, it's a terrible, terrible case and uh, devastating. So, um, but her, but Ternovsky, this human rights person, um, her home birth was, uh, was uh, assisted, supported by Agnes. So the kind of the two things, are, so it's just such an irony that the person who has, who helped the person who's, who's fought for, for home birth and, and is changing law around the world, she's now um, criminalised. Um, but you'll find out more when we uh, release the film about it. So, okay, so yes, this is the Human Rights Conference that we're filming at in The Hague at the end of the month. I don't know, is, any, is anyone else going there? Stop the door, please. Okay. So, okay, so um, so the, the documentary we were making, which is really exciting, is all about sort of human rights and what's happening, uh, this cut, cutting edge of law, which has had ramifications for, for People in Europe, and hopefully, hopefully, if this takes off with with um, the US and other countries around the world, so it's kind of a it's a it's a ballpark changer, um, and that's what the, the film is about. Um, so we're filming in the Hague. We're actually going to do a fundraising campaign next week to, um, as we need some money to uh, help us get to the Hague and, and to release the film. Uh, so anyway, so watch out for that. Anyway, so meanwhile, we're also doing a live events. So we're doing a um, releasing a one world birth dance video, so um, showing four belly dance moves that anybody can do uh, when they're in labour, which uh, we hope will turn into a viral video. So we're going to release that oh, as soon as when we kind of got the chance and when, when the, the film's ready. We've filmed loads and loads of people doing these four belly dance moves. So it's going to be a fun thing. as well. As, and just get people talking. So if people watch this video and uh, the, the viral video, Hopefully they'll be inspired to, to dance and encourage their local community to dance. So, yes. Yeah. Okay, so our Heroes Awards, um, we ran these for the first time in, um, in December. We had, uh, I can't remember how many people were nominated, maybe I think about 100 different people. We had 2,000 votes cast. Um, the winners were Nikki Mongan for the kind of World Awards, and so she's the founder of Hypnobirthing, and Maha Al Musa, his belly dance birth. And so she won the national awards, and it was just, well, I was just really taken aback that you kind of set up a, 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 an award and to celebrate birth heroes, and you kind of people get behind it. And I think it's so. This year we're going to do an even bigger event, and so we want your your nominations and just get people talking about birth. Can you talk a bit slower? Okay, yeah, I'm getting a bit excited. I will talk a bit slower. Okay. Uh, so what's our master plan? So we're creating all the tools that uh, you need. So we're creating short videos, long-form documentaries, practical toolkits and marketing stuff. And the, 
And the whole idea is that you guys and uh, thousands of other midwives and doulas and birth educators, um, you can use these tools to get people talking about birth, to open up the discussions. Um, what's important is what we've realised is that it's no good just people in the birth world talking about birth. Uh, we've got to get the mainstream, everyone else does it, uh, the, the rest of the world talking about birth. <coughs> Um, and to make them, to make kind of ordinary people, mainstream people, non-birth world people, to understand that birth is on a knife edge right now. Um, we need people to understand the implications of induction, episiotomy, C-section. We want people to understand their legal, civil and human rights to choose where, how and with whom they give birth. So yes, that, that, um, yeah, we want, we want our stuff. Um, to, to teach the next generation of student midwives, absolutely. That's the point, is that we, but it's not just us, it's like you guys, it, it, it's a team effort. So we can produce the videos, but you guys need to disseminate this information to everybody you know. Um, how can you help? Okay, so you can start talking with the non-birth non world people um, about the issues. You can hold screenings of our, of our videos, you can share our videos, you can take part in our dance events or other live events you want to do. You can start your own blog or a video blog. You can create your own media yourself. You can engage people on forums, Facebook, Twitter, Google. You can join our Facebook, join our Twitter. Um, I started off on Google Plus and didn't really kind of track it really. Um, you can notify media of local events. You can start, sign and share e-petitions. There's an e-petition going right now to, to, um, for, to grant full clemency to Agnes Gerb. Um, so there's so much that everybody can do and it's and it's it's not enough anymore to sign an e petition just to tick something and say, Yeah, I've signed it, I've shared it. It's not enough. If we want birth to change, and I'm presuming you guys want birth to change, then we have to make that change happen. There's that kind of bumper sticker in the US and we filmed in the US last year. It's be, is it be the change that you want? What is it? Be the change that you want the world to be. So it's like it starts starts with us. It starts with the person. It starts with you guys. It starts with me. It starts with your next door neighbour. It starts with anybody who is expectant, expectant, and uh, and it, it kind of to be inspired for them to find out more about what's really happening with birth today. Be the change you want to see. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so join the revolution, uh, let's take childbirth back. That's what she, Sheila Kitzinger said in one of our, our first videos we put out. Women will take birth back. Women will take childbirth back. So yes, come with me, join up. Uh, start, join, if you haven't already, sign up to our mailing list at onemorebirth.net. And we believe, we've got a saying, me, myself and my Alex, um, save the midwife, uh, save the world, or save, save birth, change the world, or save the midwife, save the world. Midwives are key to everything we're doing. It's, it's the midwives who are the knowledge for normal birth. The midwives are the wisdom. The wisdom. So yes, yeah, uh, I think that's the end of my presentation. Cool. Uh, so yeah, any questions or anything you want me to talk about, just come on. Oh, thank you very much, Dawn. That's really nice of you to say. <laughs> thank you, Tony. So, Has anybody uh, got right. any questions for um, Tony? Otherwise, feel free to put them in the comment box. Sorry, Tony. Are you all right there? Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. Thank you. Um, I, I was going to kind of scroll up and have a little look at the Questions in the comment, the comment box. If anybody feels they want to take the microphone and actually speak to uh, Tony, you're very welcome. Um, put, uh, put your hand up and then we'll um, invite you to ask your question. Uh, can I just say, Sierra Willis, is, um, she, she's part of our dancing. She's, um, she's, uh, she's fantastic. She's, she's the, kind of the, the other cog in the, in the One World Birth Dance project. Uh, I'm going to just scroll up while I just see if I've missed anything. So, um, um, yeah, please put your put your hand up. Is that how you do it? 
We've got questions? a couple of questions here, Tony. Go, t go on. Yeah, but um, Janine, um, Janine and Joy, if you'd like to take it in terms to ask your questions, you will need to enable your microphone first. So to do that, you go to the microphone symbol at the top of the screen and click on it and um, where it says allow, click on the allow. Then that gives you access to the microphone and do feel free then to go ahead and answer, ask your questions. I, I think I'm on. Can you hear me? Yep. No? No. Okay, uh, well, thank you, Tony. Um, uh, I've been reading the I've been reading these very fast little comments, and it must be very hard for you to speak when you see them all coming up. But that that um, really creative um, dilemma between the midwife and the woman in the whole birth role. You know, the, the mothers have the knowledge, the midwives have, have the knowledge, and uh, I just feel we've got to protect midwifery so that midwifery can protect um, the, the women and birth. Because of course, mothers come at birth for the first time and they, their minds are cluttered with all the social stuff they hear, all the, all the stories they've heard, what's usual in their community. Whereas the midwife, it can practice over a couple of generations. I'm, I'm in my 60s now and, and I've been practicing since 1973, which is sort of when a lot of the people who are listening today were, were being born. And I feel that the knowledge of birth um, is so precious that I can carry it through to uh, next generations each time. I'm sorry my microphone isn't very good, I'll stop now. <laughs> um, I think you're absolutely right, Joy. I think um, the, what you said about, uh, I think you said about protecting, I couldn't hear very well, the audio wasn't, wasn't great to be honest. Um, the protecting the mother, protecting the midwife. I think um, the midwife is um, just a very special key person who has this knowledge, who has this, um, and you said the mother has the knowledge. I think the, um, I don't think many mothers realise though that they have the knowledge. I think they, they doubt their own instincts and instead they turn to Facebook and they turn to Google instead of, to, of, of knowing themselves. And I think it's uh, part of the midwife's job to inform and uh, although I know informed choice is not often possible because of hospital protocol but I'm not a midwife I'm not a midwife but what do you guys think okay I'm now going to read the, read the comments um hello hello who's that hello hello it's Denise <laughs> hello Denise <laughs> um, I, hi, um, I think there's a level at which, um, it, to say save the midwife is about saving true midwifery, about midwives who've had the experience of being with women who, who have let go and birth physiologically and so forth. I think, um, there's a poem that says children learn what they live and the same is true for some midwives and doctors and all the rest of it and what we really need to do is to encourage all midwives to uh, step outside of their comfort zones and to explore um, what is possible in regard to physiological childbirth and um, yes, I just know that many midwives, for example, are afraid of home birth and practicing in home birth, and um, and and so when you say save the midwife, uh, it's it's a little bit general, and um, yeah, I just want to encourage that what you said about physiology is the key. It's about exploring the physiology, supporting the physiology, and understanding the significance of what, like the messages that Michelle O'Donnell and people give out about how this can impact on future generations. 
And so just when we're looking at verse issues, it, it's more than just um, choice, it's about information. Thank you. I thank you for all your... No, I completely agree with... Oh, thank you. I, I, I completely agree with you. I, I was saying um, save the midwife just because we've interviewed various people around the world, various people of these feet of birth experts, and they were saying that birth is at a nice age right now and that, um, you know, you've got a C-section rates at 93% in some private Brazilian hospitals. Uh, you've got C-section, we've just been in Hungary, they're um, in their university hospitals, their C-section rate is 50%. And the obstetrician told us that. Um, you've got uh, many other countries uh, where you've got C-section rates so high. Um, with some of these experts we were interviewing, we were saying, well, what's going to happen in 20 years' time? And they were saying, midwifery could be gone if we don't act now. Birth is on a knife edge. If you're going towards the more obstetric model of care, um, then you, we could lose the skills of midwifery. We could lose the skills of, of breech birth of twin deliveries um, because, uh, and that's why I'm saying, so save the midwife is more to say, we've got a, um, it's, it's up to midwives to, um, uh, it's, it's kind of the responsibility of the midwife, but it's also the responsibility of every woman to fight to save midwives, to fight to, for, to fight and be informed for a, a physiological birth. I'm not saying that a physiological birth is right for everybody, um, and I respect people's choices, or um, if people have a C-section, if it's a positive birth experience, helped by a midwife, then great. But it's just this kind of the skills of a midwife, they're under threat right now. That's, what, that's not what I'm saying, that's what various different experts we've filmed, that's what they're saying. So what do you guys think? Oh, that's a very active discussion. Does anyone else have a, a question? I, I want to use the microphone to ask a question. She's got her, net, her hand up, Do you, you want to take the microphone and ask your question? I've asked my question. <laughs> oh, sorry, a big question. Anybody else want to take the microphone um, and ask their question? Ask a question. I've just seen Jay, I just, well, just while other people raise that. I love this raising your hand. Um, Jay says, uh, sorry, I don't have a microphone. I can't hear whoever's talking. Um, so Jay says, I want to know if there are only projects in Australia. Okay, we want to come to Australia. We want to come to Australia and New Zealand. We want to film what's going on there. We know that home birth is under threat and, um, it, and we've interviewed, we've interviewed uh, Professor Sally Tracy. We've interviewed in, um, independent midwives from Australia. Um, we want to kind of get on the ground and find out what's happening. So for us, one more birth is coming to Australia at some point. But as with everything, uh, it comes down to money. We don't have, we've paid for this all ourselves. And so now it just comes down to, once we start launching the film, then it's going to have to, uh, on a, a kind of donation or contribution basis, because uh, we can't afford to get to Australia and New Zealand. So yeah, so we're coming, and I know Face of Birth, um, they did some wonderful stuff with, the, with their film, and had premieres all around Australia. So. Um, um, yes, there is something, actually Alex just said, we're talking to someone uh, called, in, in, Australia. in Western Australia, Beth, Beth I think, um, she might be on here now, um, um, and, and she's doing uh, a fantastic Women Can, Can Do It 2013, so watch out for that, I think that's going to be fantastic. I would love to come to the Queensland. Are you coming to the Netherlands? Yes, we're coming to The Hague uh, at, on May the 30th. We're going to be there on May the 30th and we're staying until uh, the end of the conference on the 1st of June. 
So we're interviewing all the speakers at the Human Rights and Childbirth Conference. Um, and we're going to be creating a whole load of kind of video content based on what they're saying. So as well as the kind of uh, doc special documentary all about this human rights issue, excuse me, and Agnes Garib, we're filming, um, we're going to release kind of uh, birth professional information, so information that birth professionals need, how they can act on this new, this new law that changes everything. Uh, check out the Community Midwifery Programme in Perth. Yes, I'd love to. Yes. I work as a ninja midwife. <laughs> I just wanted to know how much we... Yeah. What is a ninja midwife? Yeah, what is a ninja midwife? Underground. Okay. Where are you, Christina? Can we come and film you? Uh, yeah, BC, are we come to, we, we've went to Canada, yeah, uh, BC, yeah, we want to go to Vancouver, so um, that's our, our, our stop, or towards, as we go around the world, we're going to go to um, yeah. Western Australia and Western, um, oh, sorry, Western Canada and Western America, en route to Australia and, um, and uh, New Zealand, hopefully. I think New Zealand is where it's at with midwifery at the moment, I think it's a fantastic model of care they've got there. If only that was repeated right around the world. We've got time to just one last quick question. Jennifer, did you want to take the microphone and just ask your question very quickly? Um, hi, Tony, it's Jennifer in uh, Amsterdam. Do you hear me? Hello, 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 Jennifer. Oh, you do hear me. Okay, I wasn't sure what was coming through. Uh, I just want to say thank you for everything that you're doing. <laughs> and um, uh, I'm a bit uh, overwhelmed that you were just with Agnes and uh, could hear her voice at this moment and you taking the time today to talk about the Human Rights Conference in The Hague. I think around the world we hear people talk about uh, birth in Holland um, and as being this place where you can have natural birth. And I just want to put out there that I think at this moment in Holland we're, we're losing our natural birth culture. And I think the work you're doing to promote internationally to, to, to maintain the birth culture is really important. And I, I think this conference, you bringing it up, I think this conference is really paramount to us coming together as an international birth community and supporting each other. And, and moving forward, um, yeah, I'm really excited and happy you're going to be there to film this and, and put it out to people. So, I, yeah. Thank you. I do well, thank you. If you're there, then I'll meet you. <laughs> uh, thank you for thanking me, but um, if you're there, then I'd love to see you. So uh, we will meet each other. We'll absolutely see you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, look, I'm, I'm going to interrupt and um, call a halt to uh, um, proceedings now. I'd like to thank Tony very much um, for her wonderful presentation. I'm going to um, turn off the record button now.